to develop and to the congregation like Smyrna and Philadelphia. God expects us to do things greater in this city because Crenshaw can do it. When everybody here is praying, you can move this city. You can move it to the point because prayer can change things. Prayer in operation, prayer, God hears prayer because you shake up heaven. Because when the prayers of the righteous avail it much, and God will strengthen us. Tonight's lesson is a new way of thinking in Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, 17 through 32, our text be taken from the night. It's to give us the insight that we must start thinking differently. Many people are thinking all kind of things. But we must stay with the Bible. That is our guidebook. God's word is what give us authority and tell us how to do certain things. There are some liberty that God give us that we can change the time to come in at 8, 9, 10, and 11, long we meet on the first day of the week. But when we change the doctrine, then the Lord is on us. We cannot bring man's doctrine in here, but we must bring you the scriptures. And when you have the scriptures, then you must listen to the authority from heaven. Because Jesus said, all power has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and teach all nations. He told us to go teach all nations. This is a nation just in California. Then we can go abroad. When we get you saved, then we can go abroad to help others. The nation can be in your house. That people are lost right in your house, that unsaved. And God wants us to stand up and preach the gospel to the world. And when we do that, then we are doing what he asks us to do. That's why he said a new way of thinking. You must be on your job for 30 and 40 years and sometimes 10, and nobody ever know you're a Christian because you talk like them. We're going to get that in in a minute. You can't be like other people. You got to be yourself. And when you be yourself, God will bless you. In our text, Ephesians chapter 4, this I say therefore and testified in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance of that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, having given themselves over for lawlessness to work of uncleanness and greediness, but you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conduct, the old man which, it, which grow corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. I don't know how I missed that one, but it's... Righteousness and holiness, read the text, is there. And so God wants us to have a new way of thinking. Let him not come down in vain that the things he walked among mankind to do to put us right with him. We was doomed. God commended love towards us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He died to set us free. And by setting us free, he expects us to start thinking differently. Sometimes people can think crazy and never had a drink in life. Never had anything. Sometimes they had too many pills that they're swallowing. And they see all kind of things. But yet they want to be smoking. Our world is getting wicked by the day. And each state is disrespecting God. By passing laws that they have. This is not in my scripture. Brother Barnes, get me in Romans 13. In verse number one, I, I want you to see something, then we'll get into the lesson. The world may do a lot of things, but as children of God, we must make a stand. And by making a stand, God expects you, regardless of what laws come into issue, you must stand on the word of God. Because God's word will set the decorum for all of us. Regardless of what our president say, what our governor with our legislator or the congressman, and it's going live, and I can stand my ground with the word of God. Amen. But the Bible says in Romans 13, 1, 
Let every soul, some souls, he says some souls. Let every soul be subject to the high power. We're talking about the high power that sits at the right hand of God. That's the high power. We're not talking about the power in Washington, D.C. We're talking about high power. The high power will set things in order to see whether we are going to follow his word or cater to Satan law. Satan got a lot of laws that are going on. And sometimes we are people say, well, I don't want to bother anybody. God going to bother you at the judgment. He's going to put it on you when you don't tell him what's right. A new will thanking me tell people I was like that, but I have refrained from it. I must think different. Read, please. There is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. God ordained laws that are right. He ordained laws that will help you. But when laws come in, they're trying to make money. That's why the books say the love of money is the root of all evil. It's the root of all evils. And so we see that when Paul is writing to the church, He's given them saying that you no longer must walk like the Gentiles. The Gentiles are walking in vanity of their mind, the fertility of their mind. People want to just do anything they want to do. You do what I want to do because this is how I feel. Your feeling will get you in trouble. Feelings are not reliable. You can go to the medicine check and go in there and pull some medicine and with feeling and take the wrong medication and down you're going. You're going out of here. Yeah. And so, a new way of thinking, changing one mind in Christ. We've been studying on repentance, a godly grief that changed mind, heart, and life through trusting in Christ. Second Corinthians 7, 8 through 9. Then it tells us we've been studying restoration. Restoration means restore, an act of restoring the state of being. Restore something given back to put on being. Back into a former original state, Job 18, Acts 3 and 21. God expects us to be restored. Then reconciliation we've been dealing with is also restore a relationship. Christ died, provide for the removal of the, bur the burial of sin to bring people back into a right relationship with God. When Adam fell, he forfeited his home and God just kicked him out. No longer could you get in there in paradise and say, eat for the tree of life. God made him go out down to work from the sweat of his brow. And so God said, I want you to have a new relationship with me because you were wilding in sin. You were out there doing things contrary. And then he tells us in redemption where this month through the end of the year, he said, we release that occur when a price is paid. He said, Jesus paid the price for our release from sin. And that's what he did. He released you from sin. But yet sometimes it's just like when a hog, when you clean him up, the first thing he looked for is what? Mud. He wants to go back into the mud. But the world is mud to God. God said, I have washed you. I have cleaned you up. I don't want you to go back to the elements of the world. But don't worry about my, my, my friends are over there. Your friend, you have no friend in the world. If you have a friend in the world, you have an enemy with God. And so, therefore, they are your associate, but you're trying to pull them out of the world into the kingdom. And if you can't pull them, let them alone because your weakness is going to cause you to sin. And so, God is simply saying to you and I, let us be redeemed. A new way of thinking points the lesson three. He say, put off the old man. Put away line. Put on the new man. The meaning of the word thinking it's to use one mind rationally. You got now to use your mind. That's when uh, the person saying our mind is a terrible thing to waste. We try to get our kids to be educated for they can take care of themselves when they get older. They got to have a wholesome mind, a sober mind, a thinking mind. That's what we tell them because we experience some things ourselves we don't want them to experience. But yet sometimes hard-headed children don't listen. And then when they started, come mom and daddy, what did I do? You didn't listen. You didn't listen. I'm not coming. I told my children, you go to jail, you're going to be there. 
because Papa ain't coming. I may send you a card because I didn't, I didn't live like that. And I don't expect you to live that way. And so when we have a rational thinking, one's thought ways of life, value, belief, and conduct. Our government and state of California has provided a school system of education for families where they can get knowledge of helping and getting employment, jobs, careers. If our government can see the value of getting an education, then we must see what Jesus Christ, our Lord, and Paul is instructing us to do by putting off, putting away, put off the old man of sin out of our lives and put it on a new way of thinking. And when we put on that new way of thinking, we got to put out the garbage. Putting off the old man such as lying, false versing, falsely versing truth. Tyson been preaching, and I told him, I said, we're on the same street. <laughs> he preached this morning on the same, and I said, I couldn't change my script because it already was on my cue card. <laughs> it was already on the card. I said, well, we're going to double up, but sometime we must double up that you can get the point. And when you get the point, God can bless you. He said, now anger is a resentment of self-control. So sometimes anger comes in because of a little nothing. We can get angry over nothing because nobody didn't shake my hand this morning when they came through the door. You must show yourself friendly. Sometimes a person may be way long gone and have a lot of problems on their mind. You must go to the bride and say, good morning, Brother Gooch. And Brother Gooch said, oh, I'm sorry, brother. I, I, I don't know what I was doing. He would tell you what's wrong with him. Then you get in the seat and say, well, it doesn't get better than me. <laughs> That's not it. Anger builds up. Then he say, stealing. We must not get out there stealing no longer. I see a lot of people go to jail over makeup, over just stealing groceries, and still an action. We must be, have generosity for one another, doing things to help people. Because stealing will get you in trouble and get you in jail quick. Now, evil speaking, and this is where evil speaking, sometimes people start thinking evil. And as you get older, Satan started working on you more. Because he knows your fate is in Christ, and you got to hold your faith because evil comes in because you're going through the change of life. You start from when you come in this world going through changes of life. And as you progress through life and get older, you must hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because if not, Satan's going to rock your world. He's going to rock you to the point that you're just and sitting there in the pew. Well, he's going to my street down. Well, God's trying to tell you, repent. <laughs> That's all he's trying to tell you. Every time a preacher come down your land, he said, God said, I'm working on you because you didn't hit me last night. You got in the bed. I could have just took you out. I want you to repent of your sin. Turn from that way of living and not think evil. Then he say, evil speaking, malice versus love. And grief, not, he said, grieve not the Holy Spirit, but by the way you are living your life. But remember you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Each person that has been baptized for the remission of sin have been given the Holy Spirit as a gift of God. And God expects you to use this power that he's given you to defend his truth, defend your life, and get the devil and resist him. That's why the Bible says you have the power to resist the devil. Moses said, I read a supper with the people God enjoyed the pledge of sin for a season. Sin is an appetite. Sin, it takes good. And sometimes people get so caught up in sin, they don't hear nothing but sin. Until sin breaks you down and say, oh, I want Jesus this time. I... Jesus, do you really want me? Do you really want me? Want me mean a new way of thinking. You can't come in today and say, well, I got it now, but I see my friend, I'm tipping. You got to stay put. The psalmist said, you got to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And when the vicissitudes of life beat it home, stand still. Stand firm. Don't let nobody toss you back and forth. Stand firm on God's word. Then he tells us, oh, that's me. <laughs> don't, 
Don't get deep into sin that you are not insensitive to moral rights and wrong. Putting away such bitterness. He talks about bitterness, talks about wrath, talks about anger, talks about clamor. And sometimes we can get loud when we come up in here on Sunday morning. This is meditation time. Coming through the doors, getting ready for worship service. And not time to tell a child, I got a roll song, pot roll. It's time to get closer to God. Yeah. Clamor means loud talking. We can get loud and nobody else can hit the person next to him. <laughs> Meditation time. Getting right to come, get our mind ready to worship God in spirit and in truth. Not passing the bullets and passing notes, but there showing reverence to God. And notice that in our conversation a lot of time when we go to a funeral, we can be so pious and quiet, but when we come to church, we can hear all kind of things. There's no reverence for God. That dead can't do nothing. He's gone. You're still living to do what's right in the eyes of God. God expects you to come and show reverence to him and worship. Then evil speaking, we talked about malice, fornication, covetousness, and this is where greed comes in. On this board, they got a lot of things that all match up the same thing. Covetousness is talking about greed. Sometimes we become so stingy and don't want to do anything. When it's time to collection, that's why I love Crenshaw because they don't have four and five collections. Because people love to give. Because you hear the word, you will give from the heart. Other congregations are begging, that's out of necessity. If you teach people, people will give right. They will do it according to the love for God. Not according to them. They come in, mm, here you go again. <laughs> but they'll do it because of love. And then adultery is a problem that we need to fix. Witchcraft and sorcery. All those things he talked about. Sorcery is mixed drugs. That's where you get to where pharmaceutical from. Drugstore. That's where they mix the drugs up. Getting you ready for everything that you need to help this body. Brother Broomfield can test to that. Pharmaceutical, drugs. And so when God is trying to have a new way of thinking, and now they want to pass the law of selling weed, then you got to inhale something that you don't buy. <laughs> and you're inhaling, and you're going down the street, and all of a sudden you get a whip. You say, what's happening, brother? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Some laws don't need to be passed. Because you're inhaling and breathing. It should not be. God expects us to do what's right. Idolatry, drunkenness, homosexuality, a swindling people. People can swing you out a nickel and a dime quick. We're not mind readers, but we're supposed to help people to come in need. And when they're doing wrong, God will get them. Luke 12 and 14, God said, I'm going to beat him with many stripes. And he don't know, I'm going to get him. He's not going to get away because your love is not going to go in vain. God is going to bless you because you did it from the heart. He's going to strengthen your hand. He said trickery, lust, lying, and, ga- and a lotto and gambling. People think it's a game. People run to the LIQ and say, I got to get a ticket because they got the, the lotto's going. It's, it's five, fifteen hundred million dollars. Don't bring it to the church. Because that's gambling money. And gambling is a sin. And people say, well, you know, you don't, don't bring it. Because Israel suffered behind one article that they took out of the temple. And they suffered for a whole nation. People suffer for one thing. God expect you to work. Have your J-O-B. Get your job. Why? Ephesians 4 and 20, he said, go to work. Still, the more that you labor, that you may help others by giving to them. And so when you work, God will bless you. Hasten, putting on the new man. What do I mean by putting on the new man? It's changing one's mind. A Christian must be put on Christ in baptism by putting on the Christian character, such as restoration, reconciliation, and redemption. These qualities that God wants us to add to our life. As we come up out of the water, we should be a changed person. You're going to gradually 
peel off that old nature of yours. Because as you peel him off, you must put the word within you. Because when your house is being swept, Satan is waiting for the opportunity to come back. He's waiting around the corner and say, well, ain't nothing in there right now. Let us go back with some legion. A legion means more than one. 10,000 of them sometimes get in you and you start acting all kind of. It wouldn't got in me because the devil is in you. Work on it. Then he's similar saying that a Christian must be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In Christ. Philippians 2, he said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And when our minds start of thinking like Christ, we become productive citizens in God's kingdom. We can do what's right in God's sight. A Christian must put on the righteousness of God. We must dress up our mind with righteousness. A Christian must put, a Christian put on the true holiness. All these things are qualities and characteristics of having a new way of thinking. A Christian must be kind, tenderhearted, and forgiving one another. Ephesians 4.32. A Christian must live the life before God and Christ that they can see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5 and 16. Concluding, put it on the new man that you give no place to the devil. Now that we have learned how to put off the old man, the flesh. This flesh it's powerful. The spirit is willing, but that flesh, it needs the ground. It needs to do wrong. And Satan is all about the flesh. He control, he wants to control you as a person. The weakness comes. God give us Christian liberty. And something, a lot of things are not expedient to do. It's lawful, but it's not expedient because people don't know your liberty in Christ. So it's best not to do around people that don't know your liberty because they're going to run you down to the point. And he's saying the character is putting away sin that is on our lives that we may return from our way to Christ's way. Proverbs 14 and 12, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the ends are the ways of death. You may think it's right, but the end, you'll die. If you die in your sin, that Jesus is where I am, you cannot come. So you must die right because one day you got to get up right. And then what will your answer be today? Will it be yes or no? The Hebrews 4, 7b said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Will you turn from your way of living by believing that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture? Everything we do, it must be by the scripture. A person must believe that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again according to the scripture. And when you go to Jerusalem and go to that tomb, there's nothing in there. A lot of founders are still in the grave. C.H. Mason is in Memphis, Tennessee, in the middle of the church. Right there, as you're going, his tomb is there. He's still there. Bones still there. Been dead for years. But our Lord got up out the grave. Got up and walked around 40 days. Say, I'm making reservation for you. I'm going to do some things in your behalf. I got to tell you, I got to let people know that 500 brethren at once see me. That is not a lie. The Jews are still blind today. It's telling that same lie to the generation, generation, because they paid God or with a bride. They paid the soldiers. And every Jew today is still telling that same lie. Orthodox, conservative. Don't want to change because they say, we're the chosen people. You're not chosen if you don't follow Christ. Amen. Everybody must follow Christ. Amen. Our world don't want you to name Christ. They just want God. You cannot have God without having Christ. Amen. And when Christ say, go and tell the world that I live, what I've done. Because my father sent me, I died for you. I hung up there and bled and died for you to give you a new start. But people say, well, don't call Jesus' name. It does something to me. It's supposed to do something to you. <laughs> you can't get a dose of Jesus and not stay the same. Because it's going to make you move. It's going to drive you or draw you. God is there to help you to understand that his way. And saying, will you turn from your way of living, believing that Christ died for our sin? 
if you believe this lesson, then come by hearing the word of God. Believe that Christ is a reward of them that deal in the sin. You must repent of all your sin. Turn from your way with a new way of thinking. Confess Christ to be the Son of God. Be baptized for the mission of your sin. And the Lord will add you to his church or body. These things that God will do for you. A new way of thinking means that I'm going to think like Jesus. I'm going to be able to allow the Lord to use me in a mighty way. I'm not going to go to, I, I ask my prayer, I say, Lord, move me behind the cross. That I may speak in your behalf the things that we need to hear and be obedient to the truth. Our Lord came to teach us how to walk circumspectly. He told the Israelites, he told them, he said, if a man look upon a woman and lusted, has committed adultery in his heart, he came to change the law, came to change their thinking. He came to change your understanding of thinking how he didn't come to die in vain. But oh, one day, when man could not save himself, the Son of God, saying, Father, I'll go. He came in the order that God set it in. The law of provocation, he came as a baby. He came in, Mary had a baby. And that baby began to grow at the age of 12. And the Jewish custom that you had to go at 12, and he was talking with doctors and lawyers about the scroll, about the scripture, the, uh, about the Septuagint. He was talking about this. And then he got up at the age of 30. Then he began to choose his disciple, and he started his ministry. And three years later, he walked among mankind, showing them how to be good to one another. Love is the key to success. Love will cause a person to go the last mile of the way. Love will help you understand that Jesus is on the main line telling what you want. And when you know that Jesus is there and the disciples couldn't really understand everything, but they kept on doing the action. And when they brought him before the trial, when Pontius Pilate, the governor said, I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. And you want to crucify him. But the crowd said, crucify him. But God wanted him to go to the cross and I'll stay. And when it stripped him and led him down that lonely road of Golgotha, with a crown of thorns upon his head, and put his robe and he carried that cross on his back. And he looked down the 21st century and he seen you and I that was in need. And he went down to that cross and they laid him down and began to draw nails in his feet. Nails in his hand. And he took him up and his pressure body just dropped. And then he looked around. The people said they looked at him. And darkness came over the whole land. And they wagging their head. Others he saved he cannot save. But God had a plan. Because bulls and goats could not save you. But it took the lamb blood of Christ. And when our Lord said it is finished. The work that you give me. He gave up the ghost. Everything was in the grave, got up. Walked through the city, said, look what the power he had. The saints got up to identify this was the son of God. And so today, there's an empty tomb that we can go tell the world a new way of thinking. We must tell them that he has only one way, and that's through Jesus. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Do you have a new way of thinking? Is that old man still corrupting your life? Do you want that new way of thinking? Just give it over to Jesus. You can't do it without Jesus. You try, and every time you fall down, and you wonder what's happening because you don't have him in your life. He is the answer to everything we need. And when your faith started to growing and growing, and the test of your faith come, you can say, Father, thank you. Thank you for being my God, because you have delivered me. The church of Christ has been ostracized and criticized because we think we don't. The books say that the church is right. He don't have but one. And everybody got to get in that one to get heaven. Because my book tells me in 1 Corinthians 5, he's coming back for the kingdom. And if you're not in the kingdom that you obey the word of God, then you're going to be lost. But when you get in this kingdom, 
it's time to have a new way of thinking. No longer thinking your way, but think his way. Listen to the book. When the elders and deacons come to you, they're coming in love. And they're coming sometimes, they have to use the sword because they watch for your souls. Tonight, while the blood ran and warm in your man, let Jesus fix it for you. He's a mind regulator, and I thank God he gave my wife a new heart. She got a new start, a new opportunity. Why? Because he seen fit to give it to her. People that don't list three and four years, could, but your prayers set that thing up. And when your prayers set it up, that's why I said, I got a new way of thinking. God made me right. To let me know that keep on doing action. And people wonder, how can you under pressure? Because I know Jesus. He's on the main line with me. And I tell him what I want. I say, Lord, just give me strength to continue to teach your word. That I don't have to worry about because I know trouble is going to come in my life. But I don't want to stop. Oh, Lord, I can't. I got a new way of thinking. I say, I know it's just a test of my faith. It helps me to get the assurance that, that God saying, goodness and mercy shall follow me with all the days of my life. That's what gives me the strength and power because I have a new way of thinking. He will deliver you tonight with a new way of thinking. As we stand to sing this song of encouragement, won't you come to Almighty God? That's what to do whenever you pray and let him have his way and he will fix it for you. Let Jesus fix it for you. He knows just what to do whenever you pray and let him have from the Crenshaw Church of Christ, where fellowship and praise are the order of the day. Take a moment to check out our website, find out who we are, get information on our various ministries, our leaders, and see pictures from our numerous activities and events. The Crenshaw congregation is dedicated to serving the Lord and the members of his church through various ministries, worship services, and Christ-centered activities and events. We have been serving the Crenshaw community for over 50 years, and we welcome you to join us on Sundays and Wednesdays as we worship the Lord, study the Bible, and fellowship together. Can't make it with us on Sunday in person? We stream our 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. services live every Sunday. Just click on the live streaming icon on our homepage. If you have a question about the Bible or simply need prayer, please call us at area code 323-292-2100. Or you can email us at info at crenshawchurchofchrist.com. We wish you well and we hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer.